Welcome everyone to our very first BFM webinar. Thank you for making the time to join us in this session about eliminating dust leakage and excess downtime with the BFM fitting system. I hope you all can hear me well. We have um, the speakers of today. Um, we'll be hearing from several members of the BFM team. We have the pleasure of the BFM CEO and founder, Blair, joining us for this webinar and will participate in the questions and answers. Our technical lead, Matthew Bailey, who people may have seen from our tech expert videos, he will be presenting throughout the webinar. Claudio Pavnelli, our BFM business development manager for South Southern Europe, will guide us through the questions and answers section. And let me just introduce myself. I'm Hans Ossing, the BFM BDM for Europe North, and I'm excited to kick off BFM's first webinar. Patented in 2006 and launched in 2008, BFM has quickly become the industry standard for connectors. Proudly manufactured in New Zealand, BFM is used by plants across the world, serviced from over 54 distributors globally. We would like to thank the distributors who are now in the call and who have invited all their customers and their support to BFM. A testament to the success of the BFM fittings is it is used in over 77 countries. As our customer base ex has expanded, BFM has continued to add more innovative products to its catalog, which is now over 20 products. It's no surprise then that the BFM fitting system is used by so many re reputable customers across the world, spanning industries from food and pharma to chemicals and minerals. This slide is a little bit nasty. Anyway, today we're going to introduce you to some of our primary benefits of the BFM fitting system. Then we will take a look at the BFM catalog and detailing the various ranges available. We will also explore the industries and applications for which the BFM fitting system is designed, along with some case studies that show the real difference. BFM flexible connectors have made in these plants. Afterwards, we will take you step by step through the installation process and finally take some questions. We understand that you will probably have questions as we go through the presentation. And we will take some time to go through these during the questions and answers section at the end. Also, please note that, our, that your questions should be submitted in the questions and answer functionality only. This is viewable only by the presenter and the speakers. Remember, there are only stupid answers and no stupid questions. This webinar is being recorded and will be available, including a PDF version of the presentation. Then, Without further ado, I would like to turn the presentation over to you, Matthew. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks, Hans. Um, and thank you to everybody who's joined in on the presentation today. Um, you know, I know everybody's busy, so it's great that we've got such a you know big number of participants here um, from our customers and our distributors as well. Um, so we've got quite a lot to cover today, so we'll jump right into the presentation. Um, so what is the BFM fitting system and what is it designed to replace? Um, the BFM fitting system is a flexible connector system. Uh, it's designed to replace the incumbent old style connectors like the ones you can see here. Um, these clamp type systems, you know, they're inefficient, they leak a lot of product, um, they're unhygienic, they can harbour bacteria. And they're not very safe to use in things like explosive environments or around dangerous pieces of equipment. So the BFM fitting system uh, consists of two parts, uh, a spigot and a flexible connector. Uh, generally, you'll have a spigot top and bottom that gets welded to your pipe or in some cases clamped there. And then you have a flexible connector which is snapped into those spigots um, to form the BFM fitting system. Um, so what are the advantages that a BFM fitting has over the incumbent systems? 
Um, the main advantage uh, is that they are 100% dust tight and 100% sealed. Uh, so this has a load of benefits for your uh, plant. You're going to have less dust around the factory, which means better health and safety, less explosion risk. Um, and generally, you're keeping more of your product inside your process, so you get more product out of it at the end. It also helps improve your plant hygiene. So with clamp systems like the one pictured here, there's always gaps between the clamp and the pipe work. And these can lead to areas where when you're processing things like milk powder, can harbor quite a lot of bacteria. Um, so the BFM fitting system, which snaps in from the inside, has no crevices like that. Uh, when you clean it, and you CIP it, you wash it, all of the product goes away um, and there's no bacterial or hygiene risk involved there. Um, BFMs are also designed to improve the health and safety by being toolless. Uh, we also offer tool release versions, but the general BFM product range is designed to be snapped in by hand. Um, so you don't have any screwdrivers or loose parts or pieces of equipment um, that can you know, injure your hands and things like that when you're trying to install them. We also take great pride in the fact that we've done a lot of testing on our product. Um, and some of this comes down to our explosion testing. Uh, BFM fittings have been tested um, quite highly. So, as you can see, uh, they get blown away under an explosion. A huge burst of pressure breaks the clamps, releases the explosion into the factory, and that can lead to secondary explosions. The BFM fitting system is designed to completely contain that explosion inside the connector so that the blast vents in the plant or the dousing systems can do their job um, and suppress that. We also do a lot of testing in terms of regulatory compliance. Uh, so as you can see here, there's a number of uh, major um, compliance standards that we meet um, from FDA, USDA, European Commission, um, we're also halal and kosher certified, and there's a lot of other smaller country and regional um, compliance standards that we meet for all the different food requirements. Um, and that's one of the reasons that we're trusted by, you know, these big brands like Nestle, Mondelez and Unilever, um, you know, to meet all of their requirements. Changing over a BFM fitting is incredibly quick and easy. Uh, you'll see in this video how easy it is to snap a connector in and out. Um, you can do it in less than 30 seconds and you can do it by yourself. You don't need somebody else involved. Um, and so this just means that when you're changing over your plant, uh, the changeover can be done you know, very quickly. Um, you don't have tools, you don't have people uh, trying to clamp on and make sure that everything's the right size. The BFM fitting's always the right size for the application. This video here is just a video that's gonna show you some of the more harsher environments that BFMs operate in. Uh, BFM fittings are designed to be used in some very harsh environments, a lot of movement, a lot of vibration, um, heat, chemical, uh, all kinds of things. So as you can see here, there's a huge range of different applications BFMs are used in and they can take a lot. So you can throw a lot of uh, you know, force it a BFM and it can withstand it. BFMs also have very high strength and durability. Um, so this is just an example from a leading UK plaster manufacturer that, uh, you know, let us know that the BFMs that they use to replace their existing connectors are lasting over 50 times longer. Um, so you can think how much that means in terms of reducing the downtime of the plant, swapping over uh, flexible connectors and cleaning up after, you know, one has broken. BFMs also help to streamline the inventory of your plant. So in a lot of plants, you'll see, you know, connectors might be cut from a roll or they might be in a huge number of different sizes. BFM standardizes and makes things in 50 millimeter increments uh, in terms of diameter and length. And that means that you can select a standardized connector 
uh, for each of your applications. So in this example, all four of the different connectors that were previously used can be replaced with one standard connector. Um, and that means that your stocking, um, your spares and change over times are all you know, greatly reduced by having that one standardized product. So overall, the BFM system is designed to significantly reduce the downtime in your plant and make it a lot cleaner and safer for operators to work in. You know, with the dust tight seal, there's no leaks, so there's no cleanup. The materials last longer than the incumbent, and they're also very fast to change. So you don't have long changeover periods every time you need to swap over connectors in your plant. And one of the other benefits is that there's the perfect fit every time. Once the spigots are installed, you use the same connector over and over again every single time. It's going to fit in the exact same way as it did the previous time. So we'd like to talk a bit about the BFM product range. Um, we'll start off with the basic stuff and then we'll get into some of our newer products that we've started to release. Um, so we offer two kinds of spigots now. Our standard spigots are made in 304 and 316 stainless, as well as a C22 Hastelloy, which we use for you know, all of those very harsh kind of chemical environments, um, you know, and these come in 100 millimeter diameters up to 1650 millimeter diameters in 50 mil increments uh, with a 125 millimeter spigot thrown in there as well to kind of bridge that gap between the small sizes. Um, we also offer a lipped spigot. So the lipped spigot is a new addition to our product range. Um, and this is to be used with, you know, your sort of modular piping system like a Jacob tubing, for example. Um, where you might have existing modular ductwork and you want to replace a connector that you have in there, uh, you can simply change over the ductwork, snap on a spigot, um, and you'll have that installation ready to go. So the BFM C-Flex range is our most popular range of connectors. Um, these are made from an incredibly strong polyurethane, and it's really important to our product that it's made from this urethane. Um, because a lot of urethanes have what we call directional strength. Um, so if you use certain urethanes and they get a cut or a nick in them, they'll tear. The BFM product is, uh, it does not have any directional strength. So it, it has what we call a cross-hatched uh, pattern to it. And that means that even with a, a nick or a scratch in it, it's not going to rip apart. It'll still stay strong uh, with that strength in all directions. Um, each of these products has a different use. So C-Flex O4OEs, our stock standard product um, that's used in a lot of moving uh, applications and things like that. O2OE is generally used for more weight sensitive applications and weighing applications. Our O4OAS is a version of the O4OE, same thickness and very similar properties, um, but it has a little bit of anti-static additive to it. Um, that means that you can use it in more ATEC zones than you can the regular O4OE. Um, we also make what we call O60ES, which is a slightly thicker version um, with a, a polyester scrim embedded in it to increase the uh, pressure and explosion resistance of the connector. We come to our Teflex range. So our Teflex range is a range of connectors that are made from uh, Teflon in a few different forms. Uh, Teflex woven is made from woven Teflon fibers. Um, and one of the advantages of this material is that it can be used on some small moving applications, um, very good for chemical, and it has a very tight weave. So you won't see much dust uh, come out of that connector. It is slightly permeable, but it is uh, you know, generally very good for uh, larger micron kind of particles. In addition to that, we also have our Teflex MP range. So these are made from a, a laminated PTFE film, um, and the Teflex MP black has a small amount of carbon black added to it. And what that means is that the surface resistivity of that product is incredibly low, um, but it's still within the safe range to be used for connectors. Uh, it's a dissipative connector, which means that it safely discharges any charge added to it. Um, and that just means that if you're using it in an ATEX environment, it's gonna improve the safety. Um, of that particular area because it can safely dissipate any charge, even in some very highly generated charge generating processes. Um, we also made the Teflex MP opaque. Um, this is a connector that has been seeing quite a lot of uptake in the pharmaceutical industry. Um, it's clear, you can see through it, um, 
it is a slightly opaque connector, hence the name, um, but it is uh, slightly insulative. So as opposed to the Teflex MP Black, um, it shouldn't really be used in too many ATX environments. We also make a flexi range. So the advantage of these flexi connectors is that they have an embedded wire coil in them. And what that wire coil does is it means that if you squish the connector down, the aperture through the middle of the connector will stay open at the same diameter. So it won't restrict product flow by compressing the connector. Um, these are also good for applications where you have uh, traveling or moving uh, parts because they can flex and move nice and easily with all of the other equipment in your process. Um, each of these is made from our O4OE uh, urethane. Um, they do come in slightly different wall thicknesses. Um, for example, the flexi light is a bit thinner than the flexi connector. Um, and then we also make a flexi earthed, which is a flexi connector that has earthing lugs um, attached to that wire coil. Um, and the reasoning for that is that it allows you to earth the wire coil so that it doesn't pose any kind of uh, explosion risk or danger in your plant. We also make a whole range of breathable connectors out of fabrics. Um, so there's a number of different reasons you might use these. Um, for example, you might need to aspirate some air into or out of your process. Um, you might use an LM3 connector, which is a polypropylene fabric. Um, these have good chemical resistance, um, and they're also very good for those low temperature applications like your freeze dried coffee and things like that. Um, LM4, similarly, uh, to the LM3. It's uh, made of a polyester though, um, and it has a bit of a tighter weave. So again, similar to the Teflex woven, it won't let much product out. Um, you know, you can work with some very small micron sized particles with the LM4 and not really expect to see much uh, product leakage out of that. And again, it's got a very good low temperature uh, operating range, so you can use it, you know, outdoors or you can use it in a number of different applications that perhaps a C-Flex connector wouldn't be uh, used in. We also make breather bags. Um, so when you have air that needs to get in or out of your process um, and you have a, a non-breathable connector somewhere, you can add in a breather bag or you can use them to replace existing ones in a plant. Um, and these breather bags filter the materials so that you, know, you don't have any product inside your plant getting out into um, the rest of the plant basically. So it, it just makes sure even fine micron down to about 0.3 micron of particles um, won't escape out into the plant. Some of the other things we do with our materials is we make blanking caps and bins. Uh, blanking caps see a lot of use as sight glasses. So if you're needing to look inside a piece of equipment often, um, instead of having a big glass sight glass that you can't open, you know, it needs to be cleaned a lot, uh, but it's quite difficult, you can put a blanking cap on there. Um, you can see through them with a torch. Um, to see into the piece of equipment. When you need to change them out, you can change them out. Um, they're also good for blanking off certain parts of the process. If you don't want anything going in or contaminating it, um, you can put a blanking cap on there as well. The blanking bins that we make, these are generally used for things like sifter overs or fines that are either being sent back for rework or are going to be used uh, later or rejected. Um, you can attach these to your plant. Um, some people line them with a plastic bag and that collects all of that product and then they're easy to take in and out when they need to uh, dispose of that material or take it back for rework. The BFM bulk bag loader is a relatively new product of ours. Uh, we released this a few years ago. Um, we've just made an addition to it to start including some uh, pressure relief valves on there um, just as an extra added safety feature. Um, I'll play you this video here and you'll be able to see it in operation. Um, so this is an op in operation in a sugar plant um, where you'll see, you know, just how easy it is to use. No clamps involved, turn the air on, forms a very good dust tight seal, it's strong and it's not going to come off. We also make a range of covers for our materials. Um, so Kevlar covers are used generally to improve explosion resistance and protect after an explosion in your plant. So if there's been an explosion inside a piece of equipment uh, that might have generated a fire, 
um, before the dousing system can act, sometimes you need to have your connectors withstand that fire. Um, and a Kevlar cover means that even if the connector underneath it is destroyed by the fire, the fire won't spread out into any of the rest of the plant. Um, and that's a, a huge safety bonus, um, knowing that it doesn't risk spreading a fire and creating that secondary explosion risk that's eliminated by using a Kevlar cover. Um, we also make blackout covers, and blackout covers are used generally for things that are light sensitive. So if you have a product that degrades with UV light or with uh, visible light, you can use a blackout cover to cover the connector um, and it won't let any light into that uh, flexible piece. Um, they're also used over things like spark detectors. So if you have a spark detector in your process that needs uh, low light or no light to operate, putting a blackout cover over the uh, flexible connectors, the see-through flexible connectors is the perfect solution. Some of the other additional options we do, um, we make tool release connectors. Um, sometimes if you have a dangerous piece of equipment around, you want to make sure that people use a tool to take out the connector so they only take it out when they're meant to. Um, so we offer a couple of different options there, including a smiley face version, which is a, uh, a specially profiled shape that means that no other tool in your toolbox is able to be used to do that. So you can keep that specialist tool and your supervisor's covered or locked away somewhere in the plant so that only the people who are meant to be getting in there can get in there. Um, we also add rings to our connectors. Um, so we'll talk a little bit later about vacuum and pressure applications. Um, stainless steel rings and plastic rings are used quite a lot in these areas to strengthen the connector, um, especially in vacuum situations. Um, so we do a range of different things with those. Um, we also offer tapered connectors. Um, so when you have a mismatch of shapes or diameters in your plant, um, you can use a tapered connector to, to get around that. Um, and it just means that um, if you have a large outlet and a small inlet, you don't need to have um, you know, a lot of stainless work being done to um, your, your plant. Um, they're also very good for when you have abrasive products. So if you have an abrasive product running down the middle of your uh, connector, using a tapered connector is the perfect solution to uh, reduce that wear that you would see on your connector walls. Some of the newer products as well, um, we've started offering these corner connectors. Um, so a corner connector is used essentially to replace uh, tundish type systems or when you have for example, a sifter that needs to transfer very quickly to another level where there might be a pipe at an angle. You can use a corner connector to replace a solid elbow in your plant. Um, and it just means that you don't have to do a lot of expensive steel work in your plant, um, especially with the ton dish type swinging systems that are in place for CIP washing. Um, having the ability to just snap a connector in and out um, very easily um, it's, a, it's a big advantage. And we offer those in both our 040 and our 06 OES. Um, we also offer quick access ports. Uh, so the purpose of a quick access port is for scenarios where you might need to do some sampling of your product, um, or you might have test balls that you need to insert into your uh, equipment. So having a port there gives you a nice, quick, easy access to be able to do that. This is another new product that we're making called a surge hopper. Um, so the principle behind this is that product flows down one side um, and the air flows up the other and is vented from a sock. So these are great for use above things like rotary valves, uh, where you might have a lot of air bleed through um, that in particular with sticky products can cause things to jam up. Um, using a surge hopper reduces the risk of bridging as a result of the air and the BFM advantage here is that you have a flexible surge hopper that you can see inside of. You can see where the bridging is occurring. You can see if you've got sticky product getting stuck. You can just give it a tap along the walls, as you saw in the video, um, and the product will start flowing again. So that's it's a, it's a really great solution to uh, the traditional stainless designs where people hit them with hammers and don't really know what's going on inside that product. Uh, this is our latest uh, release connector. This is called the BFM Wang Bellows. Um, uh, thank you to Kaperian for the image that we're, we're using um, in this presentation. Um, 
So the purpose of a weighing bellows is to eliminate the vibration of a machine and how it affects a scale. Uh, so if you have a very sensitive piece of equipment, such as a loss and weight feeder, um, you would use these on the inlet and the outlet of that product. And what it does is it means that any kind of vibration from your other equipment isn't transferred into the scale, which allows you to get a lot higher uh, accuracy um, on your readings from that scale. This video here is just a, a quick show of how important it is to get the uh, installation right when installing these. Um, to make them effective, they essentially have to be made um, and welded into place exactly 80 millimeters apart. Um, there's a small tolerance of three millimeters on that, so it's, it's very, very fine. One of the other things to note with uh, weighing bellows is that the horizontal installation, um, so between the spigots here, this is the vertical installation, needs to be perfect. They also need to be installed horizontally perfect as well. So that means no offset at all between the spigots. They should be completely concentric when installing these to make sure that you get uh, minimal vibration transfer through the product. So now we're gonna go over a few of our uh, different industries and applications for our products. Uh, these are four of the main kind of uh, industries that BFM operates in currently. Um, and they cover a whole broad range of sub industries as well. Um, so obviously there's food, chemical, pharmaceutical, and mineral. Um, these are all huge industries and there's a lot of applications for BFM in each and every one of them. Um, let's go through some of the uh, different applications that BFM's used in, in these industries. So this video here shows, uh, you know, BFM's operating on a sifter. They, this, is, this is what BFMs are designed to do. Um, this is a very typical BFM application. Um, this particular one is using uh, fabric LM4 sleeves um, because they needed to get some air in. And here you can see uh, large wood chips being sifted through BFM C-Flex connectors, a very abrasive and a very uh, hard product to deal with. Um, and some of these other ones are you know, other food and chemical applications as well. So BFM connectors are designed to be used with both pressure and vacuum. So this video here is an example of why a BFM fitting is, you know, a much better option rather than a clamp type connector under pressure. Um, so as you can see here, the uh, clamp type systems, there's always a small gap where the uh, connector and the clamp meet. Um, and under pressure, these are areas where material can be pushed out from the product and into the plant. With a BFM, the internal seal under pressure gets pushed out against the spigot and actually forms a tighter seal against that spigot. So you have less risk of dust coming out when the pressure increases. You'll also see here just how you know, effective a BFM is compared to a clamp type connector uh, when being put under pressure. You know, as you can see here, our, our C-Flex material is extremely strong. So even though we recommend a maximum operating pressure of 5 PSI, the material can handle much higher pressures as well before it would uh, plastically deform. You see, even at 7 PSI, uh, the connector will return to normal after it's been inflated. BFMs are also designed for use with vacuum. Uh, so you'll see here, uh, an example of a connector being put under vacuum. Um, obviously, these connectors can close up when you're using them under vacuum. Um, and this is one of the reasons that we recommend to put stainless steel rings onto our connectors. Um, you also note that um, we recommend to use a tool release version as well when used in a vacuum application to stop the cuffs from being pulled out uh, by the vacuum. And you'll see on the right there, um, the connector is being put under you know, quite a lot of vacuum, yet it's staying open because the stainless rings are holding the uh, connector open so the product can keep being transferred and keep flowing through. This is another uh, example of a plant that's operating under very heavy vacuum. This particular plant operates 
uh, these 150 diameter connectors at full vacuum. Uh, so that's one atmosphere of vacuum, which is absolute vacuum. Um, and so, you know, BFM connectors can take a, a huge range of different pressures and vacuum uh, pressures as well. BFMs are also used quite a lot around metal detecting equipment. Um, so as you can see here, um, installing a BFM around a metal detector is incredibly easy. Um, once it's snapped into one side, you can fold up the cuff, pull it through and snap it into the uh, spigot at the other side. Um, because the spigots are hard fixed in place, you can always make sure that they're outside of the range of the metal detector. Um, and it means that every time that you install the BFM, it's installed in the perfect place as well. So again, the quick access port that we discussed earlier, um, this was designed with metal detecting in mind. Um, you know, if you need to put in test balls or test strips into your equipment uh, quite frequently, having a, an access port rather than a large um, door on your system is, uh, you know, it's a, it's a big advantage. So BFMs are designed to help with electrostatic buildup. Uh, the image you see on your screen is from uh, the Imperial Sugar Plant in the US, uh, where they had a very large dust explosion. Um, so obviously in this plant, there was a huge buildup of dust, um, a fire occurred, and that created an explosion, which led to a secondary explosion, which happened to destroy the plant. Um, so it's really important to make sure that you reduce the risk um, of that occurring in your plant. Um, and one of the ways to do that is to use uh, static dissipative connectors or connectors that can dissipate the charge generated by your product. Um, so everything that moves past another material, it generates a static charge. Um, fast moving products in your product stream uh, generate a stronger charge than slow moving ones. Um, so if you're using an insulative connector um, and that is not dissipating the charge from your product, it can lead to a static buildup in your uh, connector, which can lead to sparks, which can lead to explosions, which can lead to secondary explosions, and you get a plant like the example we saw before. Uh, BFMs are designed with uh, static dissipative materials in mind. Um, so all of our C-Flex range are static dissipative, um, with our anti-static um, being slightly more so. Um, and they're designed to safely uh, take that charge that's built up due to static and dissipate it through the spigots into the earth. Uh, we often get asked, are earthing cables enough in your plant? Uh, the answer is no. Um, you really need to make sure that you're using a dissipative material as well. Uh, an earthing cable is great for eliminating a potential difference uh, between the pipework. Um, which is good for stopping a large spark as a result of a, a difference in the uh, electrical potential there, uh, but it doesn't stop the buildup of uh, electricity inside the connector itself. Um, and so you really need to make sure that you're using a connector that can dissipate uh, the charge generated by your process. Um, this is a, an example of a high risk area solution. So if you have an ATEX environment, for example, um, where there is a rule that means you need to upgrade your, all of your electrical equipment within a certain distance of a flexible connector installation. Um, you can actually eliminate that risk by using a double layer connector. Um, and one of the benefits of doing this is that it means that uh, in those instances, you don't have to upgrade a lot of the electrical equipment to um, a higher standard than it needs to be. You have a fail safe around the connector which means that in the event that the connector on the inside fails as a result of wear, you have a secondary connector on the outside to contain the dust um, and allow you to you know, shut the plant down, swap over the internal connector and get back to operating normally. BFMs are also designed with clean in place in mind. Um, so you'll see in this uh, video here that the BFM fitting seals incredibly well with our CIP cleaning fluid. BFMs are not always 100% liquid type, but generally in CIP applications like this, you won't see any kind of leakage within your plant. 
Um, this is done particularly in dairy and food plants where they need to clean their plant often. Um, they'll do a chemical wash um, with their connectors in. Um, you see here at the end of this video, we also make what's called a wash sleeve connector, um, which are designed specifically to be used uh, for washing only. Um, and so they have a special little stamp on them so that people can identify that they are uh, a connector that's only designed to be used in the cleaning phase. It's really important when doing that cleaning that we uh, make sure that our acid and caustic levels are kept to these uh, levels here. Um, we don't like to go higher than that because that can cause your connectors to kind of, um, you know, break down quite quickly. Uh, the corner connector, again, like we talked about earlier, is used to replace these tundish type systems. Um, so this big swivel system that you see on the right here can be replaced by a single connector uh, that snaps into the inlet uh, with the CIP fluid to the outlet where the CIP gets washed away. Um, so let's look at a few case studies. Um, here's a, um, an example of some heavy leakage being solved on a sifter. So previously with the clamp connector, there's a lot of dust that comes out of that, um, especially with the type of material that they're using, replaced with the BFM, um, and it means that they don't, they no longer have that leakage. Again, here's another uh, similar one. Um, these people have lost no production time since installing BFMs. Um, previously, the kind of bags that they were using uh, would fall apart. They would lose a lot of uh, material. They'd lose a lot of downtime replacing them. Um, so switching to the BFM means that they can get through their product um, manufacturing cycles. And then if they need to, they can inspect the connectors and swap them over if they need. Uh, Axo Noble, um, they used our connectors to uh, reduce their explosion risk um, and improve their ATEX compliance. Um, so as you can see here, again, previously a clamp type connector used, replaced with a BFM to um, improve that explosion risk. Uh, BFMs are also, like we said, easy to clean um, and they involve a lot less downtime. So uh, this particular plant is an IFF plant. Um, and they needed to do uh, regular disassembly and reassembly of the process. Uh, so they swapped into using BFMs, no more clamps to be used, 20 second changeover when they need to change over a connector, saving them a lot of time and meaning that their hygiene requirements can be kept a lot higher. Um, so we're gonna go through quickly uh, some of the tips for installing a BFM connector. Um, so there's a few uh, important things to remember when doing this. Um, you need to first of all identify the connection type. Uh, so as you can see here, um, there's offset, static, uh, and vibrating and oscillating applications. It's important to know which one to know uh, the exact installation gap that you need to use uh, with your connector. Um, so what you want to do is you want to measure the total space available. Um, so that means uh, pipe work that you can cut down if you need to be able to install the spigots. Um, the maximum amount that you can uh, adjust there, basically. Um, you also want to make sure that you measure the diameter. Um, BFMs are created with a tapered tail, which means that if you do have a slight difference in diameter between your pipework and a BFM spigot, um, you can cut the tail of the BFM spigot to match uh, the diameter of your pipework. Um, if you can, you should always try and align or straighten any offsets. Um, the reason for that is that if you do have an offset, you end up with more wear on one side of the connector than the other. So if you can straighten it up, if that is a possibility, um, it's uh, it's always recommended that you would do so. Um, and measuring any kind of movements. Um, I'll play a video here that'll show you um, how people measure with a laser pointer to show exactly how much movement their equipment is undergoing. Um, so. This video shows a laser pointer attached um, and somebody on the ground reading the movement of that precise point um, to be able to determine the exact amount of movement that their machine is operating at. Um, and manufacturers of these screens and sifters always provide a recommendation for how much movement you're going to see. Um, but once those pieces of equipment are fully loaded with product, um, they don't often operate at those exact specifications. So it's important to check um, the movement of these pieces of equipment at their startup and shutdown phase especially, um, and then during the movement as well, um, to make sure that 
you know, when product's flowing through it, you know exactly how much movement there's going to be. Um, as you can see here, the recommendation is always to have um, your connectors in a straight line somehow if you can. Um, you can install spigots like you see in the two crossed out sections, but it's not recommended. You're going to get a much shorter connector life than you would if you straighten the install and remove the offset. Um, this video here is going to show you how our installation gap calculator works. So we offer a calculator um, that you can enter your connector types. Um, you choose the installation type that you have, um, be it a, a static or a moving installation. Um, you can enter your diameter and lengths as well, um, and then enter the maximum amount of movement that you're going to see, um, and it will provide an installation gap uh, requirement as well as show you the total space that's going to be required for your install. Um, so this is an app that's available on the App Store. Um, it's also available on the Android Google Play. Um, and you can find it on our website as well. Um, so this is a really useful tool, um, and it's important for people installing BFMs in their plant to know um, that this calculator exists because it, it means that uh, if you follow these guidelines, you're getting a best practice recommendation for the exact connector that you're going to use. Um, and what the installation gap calculator shows is a mathematically calculated uh, installation gap recommendation, which is going to help improve the connector life in your plant. Uh, here's a couple of videos of some typical problems that we see. Uh, when people get the installation gap wrong and they leave it too long, for example, uh, you can see a lot of stretching of the connector. And what that stretching means is that Every time the connector rotates around, it's pulling and stretching the uh, connector materials apart. Um, and eventually that can cause stress fractures or wear that you wouldn't normally see if you had the installation gap correct. Uh, this is another example of the installation gap being too small. Um, so you can obviously see that material bunches up quite a lot um, when that's happening. Uh, and each of those little creases becomes a wear point where the wear is focused. Um, and so connectors are more likely to wear out when the installation gap is too short um, as a result of that uh, rubbing on themselves as they move. Um, and sometimes if you're using um, some more abrasive products, the abrasive product gets caught there and it can wear a hole through. So it's really important to use the BFM calculator um, to give you the best advice on what the installation gap for your application should be. Uh, this is another one that we see quite a lot, um, is connectors where people have installed them without both cuffs and the spigot. Um, so the picture on the left is actually a very good example of how well a BFM seals even when you install it like this. Uh, that plant had been using these uh, connectors and had no leakage problems. They didn't even realise it was an issue until we told them that you know you actually need to put both cuffs into the uh, spigot so um, you know a BFM will still seal anyway but it's important that you get both cuffs into the spigot. Um, and here's a couple of uh, interesting adaptions that people have done. Um, so a square to round is quite popular. Um, it's a very simple sheet metal operation to turn a square flange into a round flange um, to attach a spigot to. Um, we also see some people flush mount their connectors when they're very limited on space, as you can see here. Um, so in this particular instance, they've mounted um, the spigot into their uh, sifting equipment below a very, very tight installation. Um, and they're using a very short connector in that uh, application as well. Um, you also see people doing things with blanking bins. Um, if you have a smaller inlet and you want to have a larger bin, um, you can create lids and things like that for them. Uh, we also see them quite often used as container lids. Um, and for example, on uh, a Macron IBC loader, uh, you can see here um, BFMs are being fitted to it as well. Um, and this picture on the right shows a, a twin discharge butterfly valve, so two BFMs being used uh, in the same application. We also recommend uh, flow correction for abrasive products. So if you're processing something that's incredibly hot or incredibly abrasive, um, you know, we recommend using one of these flow correction methods um, to prevent the product from contacting the connector. 
Um, and what that means is if you have something hot, it's not going to melt the connector. If you have something abrasive, it's not going to wear through uh, and put holes in your connector, basically. And here's just a uh, quick video to finish it off, showing off uh, one of those uh, flow correction methods. This particular installation is a very uh, hot coffee uh, grounds that have just been roasted. So they used flow correction to essentially keep that away from um, the connector walls. Um, so now I will hand it over to uh, Claudio. Um, so hopefully we've got some uh, questions from everyone here. Um, and yeah, we'd be happy to take all your questions. Thank you, thank you, Matt. Uh, I'm sure many of you will have a question for uh, the BFM team. So I kindly ask you to write your question in the Q&A section um, so that we can uh, answer to you straight away. Um, there are not yet any questions, so I would wait for a couple of minutes if it's fine. Okay, so we have uh, the first question. I think this is for uh, Blair. What kind of new materials is BFM coming up with uh, going forward? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, we're always actually working on on new products and new materials. Um, and it, it's interesting, the, the obviously, the more materials that we bring out, it means that there's less and less for us to need to bring out. But we are always interested in hearing from our customers as to how we can improve on the materials that we have. Um, and to be honest, we're actually always developing and thinking about improving the ones that we already still do have, which we are also doing. So, um, but at the, at the moment, um, there's a couple of things that we're, we are working on. Um, we would like to improve the uh, seal on the NP connectors. We know that the NP connectors are very important to people and we do have a, a slight issue in relation to the sealing of those cuffs and we're working on different fabrics and materials at the moment in relation to improving those um and uh but there's, there's always different things that we're looking at to, to help improve the materials so we're always also very keen to hear back from customers and people should there be something that, that they would like us to consider because uh bfm have become a solutions-based company so we do like hearing from our customers as to what else they would like the connectors to be able to do in which case we will research that and look into that for them Okay, we have another uh, challenging question. When is the launching of uh, bulk bag unloader? The the bulk bag, yep, that's for me, is it? Okay, no problem. Uh, look, we've, we have already begun our um, quest to, to do that. Um, we've actually built the first one and we've run some trials on it. Uh, we ran into a few little issues in relation to the height because I'm aware that people would like the bulk bag unloader to be very, very short. So um, the first one we've developed and, and done the t testing on is, is simply too long and taking up too much room. Okay, another yeah. one. Yep. Okay. Uh, the MP material is rigid. Uh, would be if I'm be thinking about seeking alternative for it? I think this is for you, Blair. Still. So I missed the question there, mate. The, uh, the, the MP material is rigid. Would BFM be thinking about uh, seeking alternatives or for it? Yes, yes. The the MP materials that we are looking, at, the new ones are softer and more flexible than the current MP. That's yes, they are. Uh, we're do, we're doing trials and, and so forth on that right now. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we have a. Uh... Can we check uh, a table uh, for material compatibility uh, to make sure that the BFM material will work uh, in relation to our product material? Uh, so I think yeah. this is for Matthew. Yeah, I'll answer that one. Um, so with there being so many different chemicals and different products that people uh, you know, process, it's really hard to come up with a, like a table that will cover absolutely everything. Um, so generally in these situations, we recommend that um, our end users um, get in contact with us um, and then we can check it against uh, the literature that we have uh, at BFM um, just to make sure that it's going to be suitable for your application. Um, and we can also make recommendations on, um, you know, some basic 
uh, chemical compatibility as well to make sure that things aren't going to get eaten away by whatever chemical you're processing. It's probably also worth mentioning that uh, on our website, we do have a lot of information on there and using our search button at the top, if you have a specific thought about your product in relation to whether it be chemical or whatever, you should try that first because our, our website is very, very, has a lot of knowledge on our website. So always try that first. Okay, so next question. Uh, is it possible to install a BFM uh, between a rotary valve uh, and the mill at uh, 10 bar G, explosion proof? Uh, <laughs> that's, a, that's a very, very high pressure uh, for explosion resistance. Um, and you won't generally find a flexible connector that's going to be able to withstand uh, a, a 10 bar explosion. Um, <laughs> So I think in a situation like that, it's important to check um, what the actual explosion gates or um, what, what the rest of the plant's designed to withstand. Um, because in an explosion, you all the flexible connector should need to withstand uh, is more pressure than um, a blast vent or a blast gate in your plant. So if you're going to have a very, very large explosion like that, um, you should have a blast vent somewhere in the plant that, that breaks at a lower pressure to relieve that. Um, and so your flexible connector will just need to be rated higher than whatever the blast vent that you would have in your plant is rated to. Okay. Okay. Uh, another question. Uh, we often receive the question regarding why 040 is more resistant than the traditional silicon the customer are using. And they also say that there are frequently hearing this argument from salespeople. Can you give us a hand here? I know better explain, promote. Yeah. Um, so one of the things that uh, makes OFROE so good is, um, like we talked about earlier in the presentation, it's it's a polyurethane with very high tensile strength. Um, it's also got a good hardness, a good abrasion resistance as well, um, and the particular polyurethane that we use with that crosshatch kind of uh, structure to it means that, uh, you know, it doesn't get worn down even by abrasive products. So, you know, we have a lot of people um, running this on sands, aggregates and things like that. Um, and that the material is just so much more resistant to the abrasion of the plastic um, compared to a silicon, which uh, when, when you abrade a silicon, it starts to break down. Um, it wears off quite quickly and then it can start breaking off in chunks. Um, polyurethane doesn't do that. When polyurethane wears, it wears very evenly. Um, and so it doesn't weaken in chunks like a silicon would. Um, and then when a silicon breaks, um, as you know, they tend to split and come apart a lot, um, which can lead to a lot of product coming out of um, whatever application they're in. Mm. Okay, I mean, I kindly ask uh, Santiago to reformulate a little bit the question because it's not clear to me. Uh, is there any specific application for uh, wet products that are pastas? So I think in Spanish it's, it means pasta. Uh, so if I you can reformulate this. Uh, anyhow, uh, another one is... Uh, uh, are lip the spigot also with the TC clamps? Matthew? Sorry, what was the question? Uh, TC are lip, clamps. lip spigot also uh, with the TC clamps? Um, so our lip spigots are generally designed for, um, you know, any kind of modular ducting system. So um, if you have a, a kind of clamp that you want to check if they're good for, um, we have drawings available um, that we can share. So you can check... Um, based on the kind of clamp that you're using, if that would suit the um, diameter of our lip spigot. Yep. Uh, next one. I have noticed that the, the wagging scale sleeve is not available in tool release. Is there a, a reason why? So Matthew? Or, yeah, I, 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 uh, I guess we, we, we haven't really been, it hasn't been requested of us yet um, to release them in a tool release version. Um, I haven't heard any feedback yet. I'm not sure about you, Blair, um, if you've heard anything about um, customers uh, wanting no, I, a tool in this version. But, I, haven't, um, I haven't. I mean, to, to, to be honest, typically um, 
Typically, the load weight scales are in relatively delicate type situations. They're not typically aggressive. They're not under vacuum or, or whatever. So we haven't really been asked about to release. I'm not suggesting we couldn't do it. We probably could, but uh, once again, I'm, I'm not 100% sure why we would need to do tool release in such a delicate connector. But uh, that's not to say we couldn't do it if it's something the, uh, that there's a market for, for sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what is the minimum gap needed to implement BFN connectors? Matthew? Um, so the minimum uh, gap between the spigots would need to be uh, sort of at least 60 millimeters um, to get an 80 millimeter connector in there. Um, in addition to that, you have to account for the spigots. Um, so each spigot head is 37 millimeters high. Um, and then we recommend that you don't cut more than um, sort of 35 uh, to 37 millimeters off the tail. Um, of the spigot. So overall, you probably need to account for maybe 55 millimeters per spigot as well as uh, 60 millimeters um, for the connector. So about 170 millimeters um, minimum. Okay. Which one is the solution uh, that uh, suits best for sticky product and which one for chemical? Oh, um, <laughs> for, for for sticky products in general, OFROE um, and the C-Flex range are very good um, because they have such a smooth finish on the inside. Uh, sticky product doesn't really uh, cake to them um, very much, so that can be a very good option. Um, as for chemical, uh, it really depends on what kind of chemical you're using. Um, so our C-Flex range, uh, you know, they have very good chemical resistance properties to a huge range of chemicals. Um, but there are certain things that break them down. So um, it really depends on what kind of chemical you're using, what the best connector for that chemical would be. The thing about the chemical, if you've got a, any kind of very aggressive chemical or high temperature chemical, we do have the PTFE range. So if you're talking about a chemical plant that's using, um, as I say, high temperature or aggressive chemicals, probably the Tef Teflex MP would be the pr right product for you, I would think. Yeah. Uh, for sugar application, uh, discharge from a silo to a rotary valve, BFM product, which has uh, to ensure electrostatic buildup, uh, mm -hmm. uh, require more than uh, hertz lags? Um, yes, uh, I would say it, you'd need to select the right connector material for what you're uh, processing. Um, so if it's coming out of a rotary valve uh, into a blow line, um, and you have a connector underneath that, then you would probably need to use an OFRO AS. Um, if it's being dropped by gravity into a rotary valve um, and the drop height isn't very high, then you could probably use an OFRO E connector. Um, you do need to use earthing lugs across the spigots, um, but yeah, you also need to select the right connector material for that application so that you don't end up with too much static buildup. Okay. Keep the connectors short. <laughs> Exactly, yeah. <laughs> what is uh, the porous uh, size on the breathable bellows? Uh, if you're asking about the um, diameters, pore size on the um, fabric connectors, um, now yeah. LM4 has a, a micron opening of about 0.3 microns. Um, it's not a filter material though, um, so under pressure that uh, pore size can open up a little bit more. Um, our FM1 is similar, um, but because it is a dedicated filter material, um, FM1 won't open up um, so much under pressure. So uh, after you're using it for a while, the filter efficiency actually increases as material kind of builds up on the surface. Um, and that filters generally about 98% of product down to 0.3 micron. If the tapered hopper uh, uh, can be stalled under a cyclone, um, yes, they can. Um, it's probably important to keep the a tapered hopper quite small underneath the cyclone as there's, there's generally quite a bit of pressure change that goes on around those. Um, so if you keep it a bit shorter, then it'll probably last a bit longer. There won't be so much um, stretching and pulling on it. And uh, coming to the load cell application, uh... So now the wagon bell or is replacing uh, the 020E. Uh, is this uh, correct? Uh, 
so it won't replace the O2OE entirely. Um, O2OE will always have a place, um, you know, in, in certain applications where there's not such a high uh, sensitivity requirement. Um, you know, it, O2OE is better performing than O4OE. And then again, the way weighing bellow will be better or, uh, should I say, uh, better for sensitive equipment than the O2OE would be. Um, but O2OE can be used with things that have more vibration, um, maybe where there's an offset um, and things like that, whereas a weighing bellow is a very specialist piece of equipment. It's used for those very sensitive pieces of equipment, and the installation of the spigots needs to be perfect every time um, to make sure that you get the full benefits out of it. So if you can't ensure that, um, an O2OE is still a very good option. Okay. Um... This is a good one. Would the, would there be an option to increase the 1.7 bar pressure while using a, our uh, 060 ES, uh, possibly by putting rings on them? Um, so it, the the pressure resistance of 060 uh, really depends on the size. Um, so the smaller the connector, the higher pressure resistance you can get. Um, 1.7 bar of pressure is our our safe operating pressure that we recommend. Um, but if you're using some smaller connectors um, and you do have a high pressure requirement, um, I would recommend that you get in touch with us and we can uh, run the numbers and check um, exactly how that size of connector will perform. Um, in addition to that, we are working on ways that we can attach rings to our i6 OES. So previously we haven't offered that as an option, um, but it is something that we are looking at um, introducing in the future and that will help increase that um, 1.7 bar pressure rating. Okay, I think we have a uh, last one or last two question. Uh, for venting surge hopper can be with one lead inlet and four outlets, uh, for example, inlet with a diameter of uh, uh, 1,500 mm and the fourth outlet with 200 mm each. If yes, what is the pressure and weight resistance? Yeah, uh, un unfortunately, we can only make those with, with one inlet and one outlet at the moment. Um, if you do need more um, outlets, it's it's probably recommended that you do that in the uh, steel pipe work below the surge hopper. Okay. So I think uh, we covered the... Uh, uh, I know, another one. Uh, which materials are suitable for uh, Artex environment? Okay, um, all of our materials are, for the most part, ATEX rated. Um, so we have different recommendations based on the materials. Um, you know, for example, gas zones, we would generally recommend that you use an O4OAS um, or a Teflex MP Black. Those two materials are our best performing materials in terms of our ATEX requirements. Um, and if you just have a dust zone or something that's not very strongly charge generating, um, standard C-Flex connectors, O6O, or any of our fabrics are also able to be used. Something else that's worth mentioning there is that, uh, once again, on our website, we have a very, very good chart on the ATEX page. So if you go to the website and search ATEX, you can come up with a chart, and on that chart, it tells you all of the different materials, the different zones, and the different lengths that you can use our BFM product on. And it's just a single-page chart, but it's a very, very good chart if you're trying to work out uh, what zones and how long the connectors can be in ATEX zones. So I'd suggest you have a look at the ATEX page on our website. Mm. Okay, so we covered basically all the questions. So I think uh, this is a good place for a wrap up. Uh, we hope uh, that has been uh, informative uh, for everyone attending. Once again, the recording of this webinar will be available later along with the PDF uh, version of the presentation uh, itself. Uh, if you would like to keep up uh, with our uh, latest update, uh, we encourage you to follow us uh, on our social media. Uh, you can find a lot of insightful uh, in videos on our YouTube uh, channel while, while on LinkedIn, uh, Facebook and Twitter, we have uh, news, uh, tips, uh, and uh, articles. Um, after the webinar, you will also receive an email from BFM, uh, which uh, will include uh, the contact details uh, uh, for myself uh, and Dance, so that you can get in touch uh, with us. 
Um, I would uh, like to also thank, uh, to acknowledge our distributors uh, who are uh, here with us today and uh, whom you can contact uh, for uh, expert and tailored advice. Uh, you can find uh, their details on our uh, on BFM website. Uh, we are always uh, super happy to chat, so please don't hesitate uh, to reach out. Uh, a big thank to Matthew for uh, presenting uh, so much uh, useful information. Uh, thanks to Blair for uh, ex uh, his excellent feedback. Uh, and of course, thank to everyone attending. Uh, let's stay connected. Uh, no pun intended. So <laughs> thanks again. <laughs> and hope to see you soon. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.